Hello everyone. Today we're going to demonstrate how to use our common window in combination with an indirect or direct window. I'll also be showing you how to create a new window as well as how to access that window from anywhere within your project. The project on display utilizes several different types of windows to display device error codes, alarm warnings, and custom pop-ups. Let's start off by looking at our configuration. Within my system parameters, you can see I currently have one Modbus TCP device with the following network configuration. You'll also notice that this device is our local device 4, which is important during tag selection. For now, I'll head over to my common window and show you my current configuration. Our common window is a window active on any page within your project. It is listed as window number 4 in Easy Builder Pro. Because this window is active on any page within your project, it has many useful applications, such as displaying device error codes, showing event alarms, and displaying custom pop-ups. In order to access this window, or any other window, you'll need to first enable the window tree within the View tab above. After selecting the View tab, you'll see three options, Display, Positioning, and Toolbar. On the left side of our Toolbar selection, I want to ensure that Window Tree is selected. This will help us navigate our project. Now that we've selected our Window Tree, we'll need to select it on either the bottom left or bottom right of our work area. After selecting this, you'll get an overview of the windows available within your project. Now I'll select my common window and show you the objects I've pre-configured. At the top, we have a static shape object as well as three static text objects. And next to these, we have a bit lamp that reads the connection status of local device 4, a numeric object that displays its connection error code, and I've also placed a numeric object that displays our control number, which I'll discuss in a bit. Below these objects, I have an indirect window with an offset I've created to work with the acknowledgement address of our event display on the dashboard. Selecting this, you'll see I've configured a window offset of 19, which corresponds with window 19 within our project. And in the bottom left corner, you'll see I've placed a periodic set word allowing us to generate some fake data for our data sampling object and event alarm log. Our event alarm log currently reads two states of our LW0 set word, when the value is under 10 and when the value is over 50. When the value is over 50, the acknowledgement value is 1, which added with our window offset of 19, meaning that our indirect window will call upon window 20. And when the value is under 10, the acknowledgement value is 2, which means the indirect window will call upon window 21. In other words, the window offset takes into account the value entered into its register and adds this with the offset value to determine what window is displayed. With that explained, I'll go ahead and run an online simulation where you'll get an idea of how this all comes together. With my simulation running, you can see our common window displayed on top. Unplugging my Ethernet cable changes my device status bit to disconnected and gives me an error code of 22. Of course, this can be resolved by plugging in the Ethernet cable, which, as you'll see, resolves our error code, allowing us to continue testing. If I acknowledge one of our alarms in our event alarm display, our pop-up is shown using our indirect window. Now I'll go ahead and close our simulation and move on to our PLC control object. Our PLC control object is highly versatile. It allows you to control various functions on your HMI from your PLC. Opening our PLC control object will allow us to create, delete, or change the settings of an existing control object. Let's look at the settings of my current PLC control object. This object will allow me to change the current display window 
of my project from my external device by entering the window number into my trigger address. The HMI will then perform the action, as well as clear the data in our trigger address, if it's selected, and then write the new window number into our write back address. Heading back to our common window, you'll see that I have specified our write back address next to our PLC control text object. This will allow us to display our current window once changed. Back at our dashboard, I'd like to discuss a few additional features before our next simulation. In the top left corner, you'll notice I have two buttons. Both are function keys, and both link us to an identical trend display. The main difference is how these pages are displayed. Our first function key links us to a data window on window 29. This window is configured to be much smaller than other windows by defining the window's attributes. By right-clicking and selecting our window settings, I can define its size and attributes, such as what windows will be used as an underlay. Underlays can be used in a similar way to the common window, with the exception that you have more control over what windows you would like your underlay located on. And below this, we have our Monopoly window checkbox. Specifying a window as a Monopoly window will disable control over any part of the screen that isn't the window itself, whereas a non-Monopoly window can populate the screen but still allow access and control over other parts of the screen. This, of course, is mainly used in pop-ups. I know this may sound confusing, but will make more sense in a minute. Our second function key will display a similar window with the exception that the window does not hold monopoly over the screen, and that this window has something called a title bar. A title bar will allow us to move the window around the screen using a mouse or our finger on the HMI. It can be configured within the function key itself by selecting style and position, and then selecting with title bar in the style tab. Now we'll run an online simulation to get an overview of our configuration. When my HMI receives a response from our Modbus device in our PLC control trigger address, our PLC control will change screens accordingly. And as you can see, our PLC write back address displays our current page within our common window, and this is displayed above on our dashboard or on any full size page in your project. And back at our dashboard, we'll take a look at our trend display pop-up from our data function key. Selecting our first function key, we can see our trend display. And as you'll notice, the rest of the screen is grayed out while this is displayed. This is because our pop-up window has monopoly over our screen, meaning the rest of our display is not accessible until this window is dismissed. Closing this window, We'll open our pop up that uses a title bar. As you can see on our display, by selecting the title bar, I can move our pop up window around our screen. And at the same time, I can still access other functions not directly available on our display window. I'll go ahead and close this window and discuss three more important features. On our dashboard, You'll notice I still have one additional function key that I didn't discuss, located in the bottom right corner of our display. This button will allow us to change our full screen window rather than displaying a pop-up window by defining the change window attribute in our drop-down list. This key will bring us over to our second dashboard, which contains our last object. The object in the center is a direct window similar to our indirect window, with the exception that this is triggered by a bit instead of a word value. Our direct window, as its name implies, is only able to display one pre-configured window. Moving over to our position tab, you'll notice a new feature found within EasyBuilder Pro version 6.04, called Dynamic Position. The dynamic position allows our window to change locations on screen to a user-specified location. 
To demonstrate this, I have a toggle switch located in the center of our screen as well as four combo buttons located in the four quadrants that our window will move to. Each combo button will write a different value to the X and Y position register of our dynamic direct window. The correct way to configure this is to set the X value where the left edge of the direct window will be located and the Y value to the appropriate position point of the top of our direct window. You'll see how this works in a second. Our direct window, in this case, is going to display an event bar chart, which is a special type of alarm log only available on our CMT series. Before I run a simulation, I'd like to point out one last feature related to window control found in the latest version of Easy Builder Pro. By heading to the View tab, you'll notice a new selection called Layer Opacity. Layer Opacity works by changing the opacity of objects in our common window and underlay windows so that they are more or less visible on our displays. This effect changes the appearance of objects in underlay or common windows within our entire project, not just on a per page basis. With this out of the way, we'll go ahead and run an online simulation to demonstrate our function key and direct window. Selecting our key on the bottom right allows us to change from our main dashboard to our next window. Now that we're here, we'll go ahead and test our direct window. As you can see, a direct window opened in our starting location after selecting our combo button to set the correct X and Y variables in the corresponding registers. And as I select different combo buttons, our direct window shifts around our screen. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.